I'm about to get real weird. Oh, sorry neighbors. Oh God. What's up my friend? Welcome back to my new video series where we go out and find some inspiration and head back into my studio where I bring to life my cute but quirky magical creatures. While we're at it, we learn some things along the way. Also, before we go, if you're digging the vibe, consider a subscribe. <laughs> My inspiration this time came from a little flower growing along my driveway, the Oxeye Daisy. But what I thought was just a simple wildflower turned out to be something that had quite a bit of controversy surrounding it. Oxeye Daisies were brought to North America in the late 1700s as an ornamental and accidentally as a contaminant of imported hay and grain seeds. A single plant can yield up to 40 flower stems, with each flower head producing up to 200 seeds. Holy moly. They also have rhizomes, which are underground stems that help the plant to reproduce all by itself. It's now often classified as an aggressive invasive species, and it's persistent along fields, pastures, wastelands, and roadsides. <laughs> because of this, oxide daisies can spread and take over fast. They can invade fields and decrease crop yields and negatively affect plant diversity. It's also considered a noxious weed in over 40 countries. <laughs> Some researchers are saying hold on because the oxide daisy in its native habitat is a very important plant for pollinators, with growing evidence of this being true in North America as well. They argue that the common use of herbicides to get rid of plants identified as invasive is harmful to the environment, animals, and insects in other ways. So learning all this just left me thinking, friend or foe, needs to know, bro. Once again, I found myself down a rabbit hole learning about the complexities of human interactions with the environment. I think the oxide daisy is a good example of how sometimes these things can provide more questions than answers. But now, enough of that, let's get back in the studio and make some art. If I can, I like to have references from real life, so I picked a pretty daisy here and studied all its features up close. Oftentimes I'll draw a loose sketch, and we're talking very loose here, to help me plan out how I want the final sculpture to look. Once I have my general design idea, it's time to get to work on the armature. I'm using a few different gauges of wire for this and hacking it all together with some old tape I stole from my husband. <laughs> Now that the bones are assembled for my creature, it's time to add the clay. First I start with the main torso, if we can even call it that, and then travel up to make the stem necky thing. Smooth is the name of the game here, so I spent a lot of time using some clay softener and smoothing out those lumps and bumps as much as possible. I keep adding clay to fill out the body shape and continue to smooth those sections. It's also time to add the flower legs. Nice stems, baby. <laughs> of course, no Trillium forest creature is complete these days without a nice round bum. And in fact, there's often a small uprising if I do neglect to add a derriere. So, one flower buttocks coming right up. Once I have the basic body and rump shape sculpted, I move up to the head. I use some blank cabochons to map out how I want to position the eyes and then add the little mouth. Now we're learning things here my friend, so I learned that a daisy is actually made up of a cluster of many many tiny little flowers that together form the central disc or head. Now because I don't have mouse sized hands, I can't unfortunately sculpt that level of detail. So instead I opted for a random texture called scritchy pokey curly whirly. That's the technical term folks. I also learned that the petals are actually not true petals and are petal like flowers themselves called ray flowers. So the daisy y'all is just flowers for daisy. <laughs> <laughs> After sculpting out all the petal looking parts, I attach them one by one. This is where I have to sing the praises of cosplay, y'all. Because with typical polymer clay, sculpting and attaching these like this would be a bold move on my part as it would end up being very fragile. However, with cosplay being made with rubber, these petal things will be bendy and flexible in their final form. 
Next was working on the leaf arms, and unfortunately I accidentally deleted that footage, so all I have to show you is cutting out the shapes for them. So you can trust that arms were made, they were attached, and it was glorious. We will move on to adding feet because we of course want this guy up and walking around so that it can follow you and stare at you while you're working in the garden. I take a brief pause from sculpting at this stage because now I need to pick out a woodcut that I want to use for the final base. I then proceed to mark where I need to drill the holes in the base with this ultra exact precision method. Then it's time to use Power After prepping the base, I can now get back to the feet. I like my plant creatures to have roots in some way because even though they have mouths, they don't usually use them for eating. I'm using twine to make the roots and sculpting it into the feet. The body sculpting is all done now, so I can focus on finishing up the details on its head. I made the glass eyes blue to be a nice contrasting color to the yellow that I will paint the face later on. I keep adding little chunks of clay to sculpt out my signature face look, and then back to employing the scritchy pokey curly whirly technique for these details. The very last bits of clay that gets added are the part of the flower known as brax. Brax. Bracts. Brax. They're leaf-like thingies with a job to protect the flower when it's in the young budding stage. And hooray, we can move on to painting. I take another quick peek at my reference daisy to get the colors as close as I can. I had to get a new reference daisy. My old one died. I'm sorry, Daisy. <laughs> I use acrylic paints, which take a lot of layers. I usually do the first few with some of the cheaper stuff and then work up to the more premium good stuff later. So here we're putting down some base layers. some contrast in the petal flowers, not to be confused with actual petals as we learned. So I'm putting down some gray and then I'll add some white over top. I also add a few more pops of color here and there just to add a little more visual interest. After I finished the stem base colors, I pulled back out my handy dandy reference daisy, still alive this time, and saw I went a little rogue with the green and we needed to come back a bit and lighten things up. Once I was happy with the color of the stem body, it was time to paint some of the little details of the bracts. And then moving on to the face details, this is where my studio assistant decided to chime in with some of his thoughts. <laughs> Is it funny? Yeah. yeah, that's funny. And to finish off our painting stage, we conclude with another installment of Satisfying Eye Peels. Ooh. Ah. Then I need to trim the twine and unravel it so it looks like roots. The final step I needed to work on was adding some faux soil to the base. I like to use coffee grounds and glue for this. And that's it my friend, our daisy fairy is now complete. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know what you think of this sculpture in the comments below. Also, give me some ideas about what you think my next magical creature should be. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. Gonna get bit by a snake. Okay, it's happening. This is happening right now. It's often classified as an aggressive. <laughs> it's often classified as an aggressive invasive species. Persil Perlis. <laughs>
Persi persistent along roadsides. Please <laughs> persistent along roadsides. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> oh god. Oh god, we're gonna get stung. Oh he's crazy. Oh he's tickling. Oh you're pissing him off, I think. I don't know. Who's to know, bro? 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 Okay, we're changing up the lighting. Doing some test. Aggressive testing. Aggressive testing. Power tool! <laughs> Wyatt. His mama freaking you out. Lands and roadsides. Yes. That was better. That was good. Gary is watching us. 